It sounds like something from a movie, a mysterious force that can disable our most important technology from millions of miles away. But this threat is very real, and it's being discussed everywhere from NASA's top labs to the world's biggest podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. As fears grow over our vulnerability, solar storms are creating chaos we're only beginning to understand. Join us as we explore NASA's Daring Tracers mission and the urgent quest to protect our planet from the sun's hidden power. The Unseen Enemy Our world runs on a fragile web of invisible signals. From the phone in your hand to the traffic lights on your street, everything is connected. We trust this system completely. We wake up, check our messages, navigate to work, and stream movies at night, all without a second thought. But what if that trust is misplaced? What if an enemy, one we can't even see, has been messing with our world all along? This isn't a monster from a storybook. Truth be told, it's the very star that gives us life. For years, strange things have been happening. Power grids have flickered out for no reason. Satellites have tumbled out of their orbits. Communication systems have gone haywire, causing confusion and costing millions of dollars. For a long time, these were all seen as separate, unlucky events. A random glitch here, a hardware failure there. But a few scientists started to see a pattern, a very disturbing pattern. These mysterious tech failures seems to happen after big events on the sun. We're talking about solar storms, massive explosions of energy that our sun spits out into space. Most of this energy is deflected by Earth's magnetic shield a sort of invisible force field that protects our planet. But some of it gets through, and when it does, it seems to cause big trouble. The problem was, no one could prove it. The link was like a ghost story told among engineers and astronomers. They knew something was out there, but they couldn't catch it in the act. It was a puzzle with a huge piece missing. How exactly could energy from 93 million miles away reach down and disrupt a tiny circuit board on Earth? The question hung in the air for years, getting more urgent as our world became more and more dependent on delicate technology. Think about it. Our entire modern life is built on things that need electricity and data to work. Hospitals rely on machines to keep people breathing. Banks store all our money as digital numbers. Airplanes are flown with the help of complex computer systems and GPS. If all of that suddenly went offline, it wouldn't just be an inconvenience it would be a catastrophe. The world would be sent back over a hundred years in an instant. This isn't just a wild theory anymore. The evidence is piling up, and the whispers among scientists have turned into urgent warnings. We've been living in a false sense of security, completely unaware of the invisible battle raging in the space above us. Meanwhile, on the Joe Rogan Experience, a podcast that reaches millions Joe Rogan has been diving deep into the mysteries of space with experts like former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman and physicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. In episodes exploring cosmic phenomena, Rogan has questioned how solar activity could disrupt our tech-driven world, from satellites to power grids. His conversations reveal a growing unease about our vulnerability to the sun's power, often highlighting NASA's efforts to understand space weather. Rogan's platform amplifies these discussions, sparking curiosity among listeners about the invisible threats lurking in the cosmos. His guests, with their first-hand knowledge of space exploration, have warned that solar storms are not just a distant theory, but a real risk to our modern way of life. Now, as NASA launches its most ambitious mission yet to investigate this very threat, Rogan's discussions with scientists are starting to resonate like urgent wake-up calls echoing the same concerns the Tracer's mission aims to address. But time is running out, and the next solar storm is already on its way, promising to test our fragile world in ways we are not prepared for. To fight an invisible enemy, you need a new kind of scout. You need something that can fly right into the heart of the storm and report back on what it finds. This is where the Tracer's mission comes in. The name sounds cool, but it stands for something even cooler. Tandem Reconnection and CUSP Electrodynamics Reconnaissance Satellites. That's a mouthful, so let's just call them the Twin Messengers. On a bright July morning, 
these two advanced satellites were packed onto a powerful SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket at the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. The launch was a spectacle of fire and sound, a symbol of human ingenuity pushing back against the unknown. At exactly 11.13 in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, the rocket roared to life and climbed into the sky, carrying our hopes with it. These aren't just any satellites. They are designed to work as a team. For the next year, they will fly in a special orbit that takes them over Earth's poles. This path is crucial because it will send them directly through something called the polar cusp. Imagine Earth's magnetic shield as a giant apple. The cusp regions are like the two spots at the top and bottom where the stem would go in. At these two points, the shield is weaker, creating a kind of funnel. This funnel gives the solar wind, that constant stream of charged particles from the sun, a direct pathway into our atmosphere. It's the perfect place to study the enemy up close. The twin messengers will fly in formation, sometimes just seconds apart, taking measurements of the same patch of sky at almost the same time. This will give scientists a 3D view of what's happening, something they've never had before. The main thing they're looking for is a process called magnetic reconnection. John Dorelli, a top scientist for the mission at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, explained it in a simple way. He said to think of the sun's magnetic field lines and Earth's magnetic field lines as a bunch of rubber bands. When the solar wind slams into our shield, these rubber bands get stretched and twisted. Eventually, they snap. When they do, they release a massive burst of energy and fling nearby particles away at incredible speeds. This explosive snap is magnetic reconnection. It's one of the most powerful and mysterious processes in our solar system. This process is what creates the beautiful auroras, the northern and southern lights that dance in the polar skies. But it's a double-edged sword. While it creates beauty, it also creates chaos. Those high-speed particles are like tiny bullets that can slam into our satellites, frying their circuits. The energy burst can overload power grids on the ground, causing blackouts that affect millions of people. It can also mess with the GPS signals we rely on for everything from finding our way to the grocery store to guiding ships safely to port. The Tracer's mission is expected to witness over 3,000 of these reconnection events in its first year alone. That's 3,000 chances to finally understand how this process works and, more importantly, how to predict it. Meanwhile, on the Joe Rogan Experience, Joe Rogan has been unpacking the science of solar storms with guests like physicist Brian Cox, who breaks down complex cosmic events with clarity. In one episode, Cox explained how the sun's magnetic eruptions could send charged particles crashing into Earth's atmosphere, potentially frying satellites and disrupting GPS. Rogan, always curious, pressed Cox on what NASA's doing to protect us, leading to discussions about missions like tracers that probe the polar cusp where solar wind slips through Earth's magnetic shield. Listeners tuned in, captivated by Rogan's knack for making science accessible, as he wondered aloud if our tech-heavy world is ready for the sun's next outburst. Cox warned that these events aren't just theoretical, they've already caused blackouts and satellite failures in the past. Rogan's conversations highlight the stakes of NASA's mission, framing the polar cusp as a cosmic battleground where solar forces clash with Earth's defenses. He's mused about whether we're underestimating the sun's power, drawing parallels to how little we understand about our place in the universe. These discussions, reaching millions, amplify the urgency of the Tracer's mission, turning complex science into a gripping call to action. With every new piece of data from the Twin Messengers, Rogan's podcast is proving that the line between scientific curiosity and real-world consequences is razor-thin. The Twin Messengers are now in position their instruments humming to life as they prepare to stare into the dragon's mouth. They are our first real line of defense, our eyes and ears in a war we didn't even know we were fighting. The data they send back will be critical. Joe Westlake, who is the director of NASA's Heliophysics Division, put it simply. He said, this is going to help us keep our way of life safe here on Earth. But as the first streams of information begin to flow from the satellites back to the eager scientists on the ground, an anomaly appears in the data. Something so strange and unexpected, 
that it sends a ripple of concern through the entire Mission Control Center. The first readings from the polar cusp are not just showing the explosive energy they expected, they are showing something else, a rhythmic pulse hidden within the chaos, a pattern that makes no scientific sense at all. Back on Earth, the main operations room for the Tracer's mission was electric. You see, this wasn't just another day at the office. This was the moment they had all been working towards for years. Brightly lit and filled with rows of humming computer screens, the room felt like the brain of the world. And right now, that brain was buzzing with excitement. The first real streams of data were pouring in from the twin satellites, and they were more beautiful than anyone had dared to hope. The spacecraft were performing perfectly, like a pair of synchronized swimmers diving into an ocean of cosmic fire. On the main view screen, raw energy from the magnetic reconnection events painted a picture of stunning, chaotic power. For the first time in history, they could see the invisible magnetic field lines of the Sun and Earth twisting together, stretching like cosmic rubber bands until they snapped in a silent, furious explosion. It was a scientist's dream come true, a raw look under the hood of the universe. The team was on its feet, celebrating with cheers and high fives. The coffee pot was already working overtime, fueling a night that promised incredible discovery. But then, a young analyst named Dr. Eris Thorne, a man known for seeing patterns others missed, leaned closer to his screen. Something was off. He was looking at the raw energy readings, the pure numbers that represented the untamed power being unleashed 93 million miles away. The numbers were gigantic, just as the models predicted. But hidden beneath the jagged peaks and deep valleys of the data, there was something else. A faint, repeating signal. It was a tiny, almost insignificant pattern. A soft, rhythmic pulse inside a raging inferno. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. It was like hearing a tiny, steady drumbeat in the middle of a volcanic eruption. At first, he was sure it was an error. He thought it was just a ghost in the machine, a small glitch in the brand new satellite instruments. Such things are common in the early days of any mission, after all. He ran every test he could think of, checking the software for bugs and even restarting the whole data processing system. But the pulse refused to go away. It was faint, like a whisper in a hurricane, but it was really there. He waved over his supervisor, Dr. Lena Petrova. She was a veteran of many space missions and was famous for her calm way of handling problems. She came over and looked at the screen and her brow wrinkled with deep thought. Believe it or not, she had seen her share of strange things coming from the emptiness of space, but she had never seen anything like this. Both scientists stared at the screen, completely puzzled. Everyone in the room knew this was unexpected. Magnetic reconnection was supposed to be chaotic, a wild burst of energy with no predictable pattern. Yet, the data showed anomaly spikes in energy that didn't align with the models. It wasn't a rhythmic pulse, but it was strange enough to raise eyebrows. Was this a new aspect of solar wind behavior, or had the instruments picked up something else entirely? The low hum of the computers filled the mission control room. What started as a day of celebration for the Tracer's mission had turned into a night of deep mystery. On the giant screens, lines of data from two small satellites, nicknamed the Twin Messengers, flowed like a river. But something was wrong. There was a weird pattern, a little blip in the data that shouldn't be there. The initial excitement in the room vanished, replaced by the quiet, intense focus of scientists trying to solve a puzzle. The team huddled together, their faces lit by the glow of the screens. They were looking at information coming from the polar cusps, special spots near the north and south poles where Earth's magnetic shield opens up, allowing energy from the sun to stream in. Tracers was built to study this connection, to understand how our planet gets hit by space weather. Could it be a glitch? One of the younger scientists asked, her voice barely a whisper. Maybe a sensor on one of the satellites is broken. Dr. Eris Thorne, a senior scientist with graying hair and a reputation for spotting patterns nobody else could, shook his head slowly. It's on both satellites, he said, pointing to two identical, strange signals on different monitors. 
the odds of both sensors breaking in the exact same way at the exact same time are almost zero. This is real. A shiver of excitement and fear went through the room. If the signal was real, what was it? Dr. Thorne suggested it might be interference from a solar phenomenon they had never seen before. The idea was incredible. It meant they might be on the verge of discovering new physics, something that could rewrite the science books on how the sun works. They were peering into the unknown, and it was both thrilling and a little scary. The team worked through the night, fueled by coffee and a powerful need to understand. They checked everything they knew. Could the signal be from a pulsar, a spinning star that sends out beams of energy like a lighthouse in space? They checked the data. No, the timing was wrong. Could it be from a magnetar, a super powerful magnetic star? No, the energy signature didn't match. They even checked if it was leftover radiation from the Big Bang, the beginning of the universe. Again, nothing fit. The strange signals were small, but they were always there a constant whisper from space that science couldn't explain. They were on the edge of a huge discovery, but they had no idea what it was. Thousands of miles away, the news of the strange signals from the Tracer's mission had reached the world of podcasts. Joe Rogan, a famous podcast host known for his deep curiosity, was talking to the well-known physicist Lawrence Krauss. So these two little NASA satellites are seeing something weird up there, Rogan said, leaning into his microphone. You're the expert, Lawrence. We always hear about solar storms. Could they be more dangerous than we think? Could the sun be doing things that we don't even know about? Kraus, calm and thoughtful, explained that missions like tracers are essential. We live in a world that depends on technology, he said. Our power grids, our satellites for GPS and communication, they are all vulnerable to space weather. Tracers helps us map the sun's influence on Earth so we can protect that technology. But anomalies, like the ones this team is reportedly seeing, suggest there might be gaps in our knowledge. This was the opening Rogan was looking for. Man, that's what I'm talking about, he said, his voice rising with excitement. What if the sun's throwing us curveballs we're not ready for? Like, what if there's stuff out there we can't even predict? His millions of listeners were captivated. The idea that something as familiar as the sun could hold dangerous secrets was fascinating. The implications of what they were discussing were enormous. A solar storm, also known as a coronal mass ejection or CME, is like a giant, powerful sneeze from the sun. It blasts a cloud of electrically charged particles and radiation out into space. If Earth is in the way, that cloud slams into our magnetic field. Usually, this interaction is beautiful, creating the amazing northern and southern lights. But a powerful storm can be a catastrophe. The biggest danger is to our electrical power grids. A massive surge of energy from a solar storm could overload transformers around the world, causing widespread blackouts. Imagine your home without electricity, no lights, no refrigerator, no computer, no air conditioning, not just for a few hours, but for weeks, or even months, it would be like going back in time a hundred years. Satellites, which we rely on for so much, would also be in danger. The storm's radiation could fry their delicate electronics. This would mean no more GPS to help your parents drive or to guide airplanes. Satellite television would go dark, and weather forecasting would become much less accurate. Long-distance radio communication would fail. Even astronauts on the International Space Station would be in grave danger as they are outside the full protection of Earth's atmosphere. The message has arrived. But if our leaders already knew about this threat, would they even tell us the truth? Like this video and subscribe to find out what happens next.